Why, hello there, and welcome back to another Fido Daily, and today we'll be taking a look at a Yone game with some ASMR in the process. Now, if you're here for the first time, I usually try and select a topic to cover in each video. Uh, this time around, we're going to be focusing on how to choose winning fights as Yone, okay? How to find fights that are rigged in your favor, so even if you don't execute perfectly, you will still win them, okay? League is a numbers game. It's all about just finding a man advantage somewhere on the map and pulling the trigger. And we'll be looking at that this game. Uh, we're playing Yone into Annie. I do think in this matchup, uh, you can go for the the Raptors pool. Uh, if you want to, you can go and uh, stack your queue at the Raptors before uh, the the minions get low enough and kind of last hit it with your queue. Uh, you can also play to just auto the wave. Um, if you want to play aggressive, if you want to play for a trade, both are, I think, viable. Um, if he does the pool like he did, um, he basically made my minions uh, not the same HP and made me walk up a few times. Uh, to get them, so even if I stacked my Q off the Raptors, it wouldn't um, make a difference. But early game, I'd recommend running, uh, you know, D Shield, Second Wind. Uh, just pretty much playing for the uh, for the safety and uh, the first couple of levels, conserving your health and uh, making sure that when you hit level three, when you're able to actually trade, uh, you've got all the resources you need to make it happen. So this is an example of what you shouldn't do, which is walk up for a minion and lose auto Q auto. Um, and then maybe even a third auto to there, so just try and assess each minion that you go for. Um, how expensive is this going to be for my HP bar? And if you don't have your W, if it's still level 1, just feel free to drop one minion. You know, it's always better to drop one minion than to drop 200 health. Um, so it's definitely just about um, controlling um, how far behind you get in terms of your HP bar when you play Yone against uh, ranged champions. Uh, you just kind of have to endure uh, the first three levels and then you're straight back into the game and just trying to go for sort of max range Q's, Q3's is a good idea. Now that's a really common thing, uh, the enemy will often try to stun you on the cannon. Uh, so consider actually uh, not having your W on cooldown because your W is a very very long range ability. So the best way to last hit a cannon I find is with your W. The cannon also has a very high HP so your W does uh, a bit more damage than it does to the, uh, to the melee and the range creeps. But overall, what you should be happy about is actually um, being low HP, right? Because second wind, uh, D shield, your HP part, make sure that you use that uh, only when you get absolutely low. I'd say below 200 health is when you should use your HP part. D shield is definitely not the same as uh, a Doran's Blade, right? And with a Doran's Blade, you'd be happy to sort of use your HP part at half health, uh, maybe even two thirds. But with a D shield, you've got to get to about 10, 20% HP before you use it to maximize the healing from your shield, the passive. Now here we're getting ganked, and this is a really, really common mistake that, that I still make, even though I've played hundreds of games of Yone, is uh, when, you, when you're when you getting ganked and you use your E to sort of buy time for your jungler, you have to make sure that you stack your Q, okay? As you're running away in that E, you got to start stacking it straight away. There, I didn't. I just panicked and started running away from Lee Sin. I didn't actually ma uh, stack my Q3. If I was to stack it and I would come back, snap back to my E with a Q3 ready, Lee Sin can never um, take the Sonic Wave, right? Because my Q3 will just interrupt him. Uh, he'll lose the damage and he won't be able to kill me. So that's, uh, that's a really good example of... Um, of what, to, what not to do uh, when getting ganked. So make sure you don't panic. And as soon as you E away from whoever's ganking you, you have to start stacking your Q on the minions. You have to make sure that you have three stacks uh, when you snap back. Uh, now we got a little bit tilted. Uh, I, I took a tower shot to interrupt Annie. I think I was just a bit uh, emotional uh, about getting ganked. Uh, definitely don't do that. I also wasted my ward in the middle of the of the tower range, which was a little bit troll. But uh, on the bright side, we do have a decent buy ready. Um, the next wave should bounce back into us, so it's not a bad, uh, not a bad recall. And just always make sure you spend as much money as you can. In this case, we had 950, so uh, we could either play triple dagger, um, or we could play boots and double dagger. I think boots and double dagger is a little bit better, um, especially into ranged champions. Boots is great because it lets you space, um, it lets you chase them and get a few more autos in. Like boots basically gives you more damage than a dagger against the ranged champ because you're actually getting more autos in. This is a really great thing to do um, on Yone if you know that your laner is basing. Just use your E to catch the tower, catch the wave before it hits the tower like I did there and kind of uh, create a freeze for yourself um, before it crashes to force them uh, to actually stay in the lane. 
Now you can see I'm very, very close to level 6 here, so I'm considering the all-in. I do know that Annie has no flash, uh, so I'm kind of looking for the opportunity when she has no stun. I want to make sure that I kill her because uh, just, getting a, just getting a chunk here isn't really worth it for me. Um, and I'm just trying to just trying to take a short trade here. I did lose the cannon uh, because I was hyper focused on the trade, but we just needed to take one short trade there to make sure that uh, she's low enough for our all in, so that she doesn't base. We actually do get the successful kill, and there we go. We got a kill back. We punished her flash, um, and I think that's Annie's mistake actually with itemization there. She went sap by a crystal uh, with no flash. She went no regen, no boots. So it's 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 a very greedy buy, and. We punished her for it, so again, we don't overstay, right? Make sure that you always base before, start your recall before this next wave hits your tier 1 tower. Make sure that you start your recall somewhere between this tier 1 tower and, and the tier 2 tower. Somewhere somewhere here where I'm pinging on the map. Um, make sure you already start your recall uh, before then, otherwise you're going to be giving away a free turn or you're going to be dropping a few creeps on the tower. So the earlier you recall, the better. Um, really, extra tower damage is irrelevant, right? You, you don't really want to stay for 100, 200. 300 extra damage on the tower um, if it means that you're going to miss out some creeps and you can see that because I took that recall so early We just rinse and repeat same thing, you know I try to pull the wave but he is posturing pretty aggressively and I see the volley bear is looking mid So the reason why I wasn't actually freezing was because I was trying to um, Entice him to trade me because I saw that my, my teammates were nearby um, and I wanted him to run at me and uh, and take a chunk and it's a bit of a 4v2 mid lane for some reason Akali also makes a way down an interesting roam and uh, also remember, when you're playing against Tibbers, this, this bad boy gives you 50 gold. Um, that's excellent. Excellent. So always try and uh, last hit the Tibbers uh, when he goes into enrage mode. And here, whenever you're thinking about, you know, you got a kill, what should I do? The number one thing you should always do is hit the platings, okay? Because you don't know when the enemy jungle or the enemy support is going to come mid to cover the lane. So if you hit the platings first, um, that's something that you might not be able to get later on um, if you if you try to get the wave first, right? And uh, always try and base out of vision. I'd say the line is his vision line's about here. If he doesn't go past the wave, it's about here. So this is a safe spot to recall where I am, um, somewhere in the middle of the lane. You don't want to walk too far back and waste time, but at the same time, you don't want to stand too close to his tower when you're resetting, uh, because then you'll get cancelled, right? And it's all uh, uh, it's all doomed from there. So. Now we got our items. I think this is probably the strongest spike of your own. If you ever find yourself in these two items, a Zerkas plus Recove Boy, you do so much damage with your autos. Um, and your Q pretty much feels like it always comes off cooldown. Like if you, even if you jump in with EQ1, you'll still get uh, three Q stacks before you snap back. Uh, so there we go. And that's a really good example, right? So if you can try to predict when the Annie is going to stun, you can actually press your E preemptively and become unstoppable, dodge the stun entirely, uh, win the trade. So don't feel like you have to uh, overcommit for too many autos on Yone. Um, as soon as the enemy champ has CC like Syndra or Annie, um, as soon as, or Nico even, you know, as soon as you see that they're about to cast their ability, just snap back, right? Because it's just free damage. You know, you're just getting free damage. And, uh, this was pretty horrifically prayed from me. Uh, again, I should just be... Um, I should have probably just flashed a little bit earlier there, but... We end up preemptively flashing the Annie ult. She doesn't time it well, and then we go back in anyway and just die. It was... Uh, yeah, it was a little bit too much there. Um, I think the crucial point is if you're thinking about those kind of outplays, they're really easy to intuitively go for. You know, you're getting ganked. You see that your teammates are there. You can see it's even numbers, right? 3v3. Um, you, you're considering taking the fight, uh, but what you really have to think about is, do I have teleport? You know, is my wave pushed out? If my wave is not pushed out and I don't have teleport, then I have to value my life above getting a kill, right? Because if I die, I'm going to lose two waves. If they die, do I really gain anything on top of that, you know? So um, that's something you should think about in those kind of skirmishes. No TP, uh, no wave pushed, no turn. Make sure you play to not die, right? Don't play to outplay. Even though your champion, yes, has amazing outplay potential on Yone, the most important thing in the early game is CS, right? Because CS gives you levels, and levels are worth tons of gold, okay? In the early game, the skill point, the base armor, the attack speed, the AD, everything adds up um, to, to a lot of gold. So you've got to make sure that um, you play to not die. And uh, here, uh, at this point, I think when you have these items, you can always just play to push every wave as well on Yone. Um, if there's an objective up, like the grubs, uh, feel free to... Uh, to just push every wave and kind of lean towards the grubs, ping it for your jungler, just let him know, hey, I want you to start the grubs here. I'm overstaying my turn a little bit, but I'm just waiting for my second ward to come off cooldown. Um, I don't really know why I placed the one in the middle of the lane. That was a little bit troll, but 
Uh, just by the way she's leaning, I'm assuming that her jungler can be bot side here. Uh, but I'm, this is the nice thing about Yearn is, right, um, your, your champion is very, very safe. Now there I think if I press WQ instead of Q, I uh, would have definitely killed her to cut the animation. So that was just poor ability usage at the end there. Uh, WQ is much, much faster uh, in terms of cast time than your QW. And uh, yeah, we, we see a little roam opportunity bot lane and uh, we, we pick up an easy kill on Silas. And uh, always make sure, you know, when you're in this lane like this, you can see that I pinged the mid wave for my Twitch because I know that, hey, um, I'm not going to be able to go back to mid lane. I have over a thousand gold. Whenever you do these roams, guys, just look at your gold, okay, and look at who's alive. So if you have over a thousand gold, you should never teleport bot and then go back to mid, okay? You just want to um, do your roam, get the kill, push the wave in, push the bot wave in, tell your AD carry to go mid, right, and then you just recall. Okay, because it's just, just going to be more efficient for everybody, right? Everybody's going to get the most farm on the map. You're going to get the most gold as a team. Um, and you do want to base. You do not want to stay on the map. Because the thing is, even if I walk mid there, right? Instead of pushing an extra bot wave, I'm just going to catch the mid wave and base anyway, right? And uh, if, I, if I just do the basing, then instead of wasting time walking like this on the map, um, I'm saving that time by walking there from base anyway. Um, so an important concept. Um, I see this issue a lot, pretty much in most ranks below master, but even sometimes... Um, in the high elos, people still have this bad habit, so the earlier you build it, the better. Now here, I'm, I'm taking a base because I thought, look, uh, there's no way I can be on a ward, right? And uh, I'm behind a wall, we're chilling. But this Psycho Silas has preemptively E... Yeah, this guy's a bit of a psycho, an absolute psychopath. That was honestly not... It's a whatever death. I think that's like... I feel like it's pretty unlikely for that to happen, but... Um, obviously, I did have that ward in the river that would have spotted him if he went up. I saw that he kind of disappeared here, and there's only really two ways for him to go. Either he went up into river, or he went left into my jungle. And uh, if I didn't see him going up, then I should just assume that I'm getting cheese, but I really didn't believe in it. Um, not the end of the world, though, because we did get our item, right? We got our item. It's so like you. Shit happens. Um, just start thinking about the next play. You can see, you know, I see that I've got a Kali mid. Uh, my Twitch is dead, but assumingly my Twitch would want to go bot. Ideally, you don't want to lane swap if both towers are alive. Uh, you kind of lane swap as a response uh, to one of the bot towers falling. Um, so I just simply go top, and you should do the same thing. You see uh, there's a vacant lane, just go to that lane, um, catch the farm, and uh, make sure that you have three champions farming three lanes as much as possible. Now here I can see that Zach's items are absolute garbage. I have a full item, he has a bunch of components, so I'm pretty confident I should be able to win this again. Um, I'm auto-attacking minions, I use my E a little bit too late, there's just a comedy of errors here, you know, just warming up, uh, first game of the day, but uh, we end up getting the kill anyway, and that's a, that's a good example of a winning fight, you know, just making sure that you're always pressing tab, and considering item advantages uh, when you do go for uh, duels, when you go for skirmishes, uh, to understand who to focus, or kind of feel confident about your ability to 1v1 someone. Now here my... Uh, my Nami walks up to, to heal me and takes half my plate. So if you're a support player watching, please don't do that. All right, let your let your laners, let your AD carry get solo plates because they need the gold more than you do. Um, but for the blast. but uh, now it's really, really important that we kind of... Um, we should we should realistically be trying to fix the lanes here. I think I'm all tabbed, so maybe I'm not thinking about it. But ideally, we should tell our Akali to go back top. We want to go back to mid um, and kind of fix the lane assignments. But... I suppose because Zach has no passive, uh, Zach is a little bit behind us in items, uh, we can consider just walking autopilot to top lane and uh, maybe get another solo kill, but I think this is definitely not the matchup we want to be in. Um, I guess because he bought magic resist against Akali, this is not a, not, not a bad decision, but I'm pretty sure it was full autopilot mode, and that's a really good idea there, guys. So when you come back to lane, most people will just walk up, okay? They'll walk up and they'll show on the minions, and guess what? When you show on the minions, the guy is not going to walk, he's not gonna, he's not gonna farm. He's not gonna take the, the bait, because he can see you, right? So make sure when you come back to lane, in top lane, you always go through the bushes. Just try to stay out of vision, try to stay in the bushes and see if the enemy champ is going to agree for the wave, right? Because if you take that fog of war path, he might even use E on the wave. You know, he might assume that you're roaming or that you've gone back mid, like we said. That's not a bad decision. It's not. It wouldn't be a shocker if uh, if he only just walked back mid and tried to fix the, the lane assignment. So there's a good chance that Zach will just walk up there and, and use his abilities on the wave. And if we, if we stay in the bush, if we stay out of vision, as we're coming from base, we have a very good chance to, to kill him. And this is the plus one concept, right? Always make sure that once you take that out of tower, you have to push the next wave and get it to crash into the tower so that you secure the bounce back into you. you give yourself a long turn 
And, uh... Yeah, here, just by the way that Annie was playing, I should have preemptively altered without even seeing Silas in that bush. Just because Annie was walking at me so confidently. I Look, I know I'm level 12, Annie's level 10, there is no way that she can kill me. So I could just use that information that she's... I could use her demeanor, her posturing, to guess that there is somebody coming from behind me. And if I don't ult immediately, right... What you just saw is going to happen. He's just going to body block my ult, and I won't be able to get out. So uh, that's 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 kind of like a high level thing that I think if you're switched on, uh, you can definitely kind of react to pieces of information and put the puzzle together, and stay alive in situations like that. But again, it's not the end of the world. Now, normally I would never sell D shield. I do think that your own D shield is fantastic because you don't really get your shield bow to a third item, at least when I play your own, when I build them. Um, and also this patch, I think uh, this Kraken IE build is just the best because. Um, IE is just insanely good now. Um, it's it's I think IE on Yon Yasuo second is just completely broken, right? Because you get the the max crit value with just two items, and it does 10% more crits. Um, it's also cheaper, right? So uh, I think a really really strong patch for Yon Yasuo. Um, and uh, this is a good build. Uh, unless you're versing a tank, then you could still consider going Bork. But I think if you're playing mid lane and you're versing uh, squishies, then you can just go for. Uh, this sort of Kraken, Kraken IE build. Now this was a very, very bad teleport. I'm not really sure why I did it. Uh, I did not push that plus one wave that we talked about, right, in top lane. And I just TP'd to a dead play. I kind of moved my camera and panic TP'd instead of assessing. So make sure you guys don't do that, right? Make sure that um, if your team is inting, don't compensate. The only thing I achieved there by teleporting is just giving away my own life. But how did I push that top wave? Have a look. That's 6 CS on the map that you can see I've just lost. It's going to be another 6 CS potentially. So I've lost 12 CS, whereas I could have pushed those two top waves. Denied my entire, that massive wave would have been denied to the tower. The next wave would have been bouncing back into me. I would have gotten the Krugs as well, right? So that's about 15, 16 CS that I could have gotten. Instead, I've put my teleport on cooldown. I've suicided and uh, I've achieved absolutely nothing. So don't compensate. If your teammates are inting, all good. Don't worry about it. Just think about the objective. Can I actually prevent them from taking this mid tower by teleporting there? That's the only question you should ask. And if there's still three or four enemies alive, then you can never prevent that tower from, from being taken, right? The best case scenario is that you get one, maybe two kills back. Now here, we can see that my Akali is 050. This is really important, guys. If your, um, if your other split push champ is really, really far behind, it's important that you try to play the strong side of the map, right? You gotta ping your teammates, you gotta ping your jungler, you gotta ping your support to come to your side of the map because you know that if they play bot side, guess what? This Akali is like negative 4,000 gold, you know, on whoever is gonna match her. Um, whichever champion is gonna be, whether it's going to be Annie, uh, whether it's going to be um, Zach, she's really, really far behind. And if we play that side of the map, it's going to be a losing fight. Even if we have even numbers, it will just be a losing fight because we're down gold. So I'm just letting my teammates know, look, I just want to fight in the top side. I don't care how we do it. I don't care if we play through river. I don't care if we play through top lane itself. But I need you guys to stay on my side so that I can get active, right? I'm basically full build. I've got Infinity Edge. I've got my Kraken. I can one-shot anyone. But here, it's very important that with this build, you're, you're quite patient on your own. So stay out of vision. Staying out of vision is really, really important. And then you can get nice ultimates off. Now, this ulti missed, uh, you know, everybody. I only have one person with it. And then I kind of got CC chained, but what's important is that we're taking a winning fight. You know, we're fighting on our strong side. We did have Akali actually move over, so we had a 5v4. But even if this was a 4v4, this was still our best chance at winning the game because we're playing towards the side that has the most gold, right? That's all you guys have to do if you're thinking about, you know, which side should we play? Just play towards the objective, and if there's no objective up, play towards your strong member. Right, because if you're fighting 30,000 gold on four champions into uh, 30 30,000 gold, and you have a decent chance. But if we're fighting bot side there, you know uh, we'd be down five five k, and uh, we'd it'd be a losing fight. So uh, always try and uh, kind of get the most out, out of uh, out of the enemies being dead. Here I walk up to kind of chunk this tower. I'm thinking about taking the next wave. Uh, it's a little bit greedy, but what I'm thinking is I saw that my teammates are pushing mid tower at the same time. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make them choose. Are they going to respond to me or are they going to respond to the mid wave, uh, to the mid play? So um, just making sure that, that my teammates can secure that tower. Here, for example, if Annie walked mid, potentially more of my teammates would have died. So if I took a safer recall there, right, I'm basically leaving my teammates to um, out to dry and... Uh, that's something you should be doing, right? Even if it's dangerous to pressure that tower, even if you don't think you can get that tower, you just do it to protect your teammates. You do it to pull their resources towards you um, and away from, from where the rest of your team is. And 
Now here a bunch of my teammates died and I can see it's a 3v5. Now, rule of thumb guys, if it's a 3v5 you should never contest Baron, okay? But I do see that we can kill the Silas here for free. Uh, so I'm considering actually contesting in a 3v4 because Baron is uh, an extra teammate for us. So we're going to have a look in. Um, this is definitely a dangerous contest, but I see the scuttle. Um, it's very important when you have scuttles like this. You just stack up your key, right? Because it's going to be really hard. Now I've missed two Qs on the scuttle, which is probably the difference between us actually killing Lee Sin there and getting the Baron steal and uh, not getting anything there. So the idea was correct, but uh, ideally you actually, uh, you know, land your abilities on the scuttle faster so that you can get into the fight and uh, make a difference but regardless we actually win the fight uh, we we identify correctly that look silas looks like he's a little bit too far off he's going to die before the baron um, gets taken and then we have a 3v4 with baron as our fourth member so it should be an even an even stevens fight and uh, we get the kills now here i'm a little bit cautious of the silas walking towards me because he's been doing all those cheeses in the early game and the bot tower dive so i've i feel like he's He's shown intention to do to do the low percentage plays with with high with high reward. And finally, he shows a mid wave, so I am able to greed uh, greed for the wave. So make sure you do that, guys. Make sure that you actually think um, think about the variables. And if something new happens on the map, if you get new information like that, Silo showing a mid wave, even though I was playing it safe, I, I immediately just greed for the wave and and stick around. Uh, now I'm telling my colleague to not side lane here because. Um, I am much stronger than her. I can actually uh, make progress on the side. She cannot. Um, however, I should still be playing very safe because I can get picked off. I am the strongest member. I do want to team fight. So here I should blue trinket this tribush, but I'm too busy typing. And uh, we'll play for dragon. So whenever you play for dragon, you just want to make sure that you push out the wave with the uh, the supers and uh, link up with the rest of your team. Now here, realistically, I should already be linking up with my team. I shouldn't be trying to push this wave. We see that Lee Sin is uh, looking for a fight, uh, jumps in, doesn't achieve anything. We get the kills, so. Always make sure that you push the wave out again before you do the objective. Uh, as soon as you get the kill, you go back to your wave, you push it out, and now we have options, right? Because I have that bot wave, have a look at that bot wave. This is a winning fight for us, and what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? As soon as we're done, Boom, I'm going to go back and just start pushing the tower. That's it. Just start pushing the tower. And if I did not push that wave, my whole wave would be here, guys. It would be here. But the, the entire wave would have died to the super creep. And we would never be able to get this bot tier 1, right? We would still get the dragon. Don't get me wrong. We'd still get the dragon. It'd still be a winning fight for us. But we wouldn't get that plus 1. We wouldn't get the extra objective. So it's so crucial that you build this habit of as soon as the fight's over, as soon as I'm on cooldown, I am thinking, do I have a wave to push? All right? Do I have the ability to get more? Um, out of this fight and then that's also a good mechanic that you could do right if your minions are about to die and the next wave's coming in just use your e uh, snap out of tower range and just instantly come back in to get a few extra autos um we grab the tower and uh our volleyball is uh doing dragon so we go out and help him uh, we have a lot of money but uh, we're a little bit short of our item it should always be a winning skirmish for us just because we have a you know damage dealing champ in yone and they uh, flame two tanks or a bruiser in a tank uh, plus Lee Sin also has Merc Treads this game, so he's very, very squishy. Uh, we secure the two kills, try to fish for more if possible, but Dragon's kind of the main priority. I stack up my Q on the Dragon, see if we can max range Q on the Annie. She ends up flashing out, it's unrealistic, so we just go back. And because we know that they can't be on this side of the map, nobody can really be here. They can kill us, uh, two of them are dead. So instead of just recalling, we're going to go and assess... Our wave state, try and fix our waves, because the faster we push this, right, the longer time we're actually going to have topside uh, to play for the next objective, right, to play for the team fight. So it's pretty important for me to collect these waves and then uh, group up with my team around when these timers are up, right? Right now, I don't need to worry about being with my team because there's two people dead on the enemy team. So even if I'm not there, technically it's 3v4, and my guys just should not be dying. Um, they do end up kind of dying, and it looks like it's a prolonged fight. This was probably a bad TP. I think that if I, if I saw in the back of my eye Akali where she was, I think Akali would have had the same impact I did. Uh, but I just needed to keep pushing these waves, because if had I just kept pushing these waves, I could recall and then run straight into their topside before they could even respawn and uh, control their topside jungle. But alas, we're here now. Uh, not really sure what we're looking to do here. Uh, it's just a complete waste of time, right? There's nobody to kill. Uh, but if they fight us... We can look for it. We end up fighting an angle on, on Lee Sin. Uh, he oversteps. We have a wave. So the chain feed continues. Really, and there's no logic there to what just happened. It was just the enemies deciding to defend their, their inhibitor 2v4. 
And uh, we gladly pick this one up. We now have 4,300 gold. So we're definitely looking for a base. Uh, there's really nothing else here. We're just trying to force the elsewhere back a little bit so he doesn't uh, cancel our recall. And uh, yeah, we just see that the top wave is not quite pushed in. So we're thinking, you know what, let's uh, let's push this top wave in. Uh, greed even more before our recall. And then we even play for the local gold on the top tower, which is a little bit too much. I think the main issue here is that I actually had blue trinket. And I could have easily blue trinketed that 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 spot right there on the map. That's where you should blue trinket because I've already covered one entrance. If they're coming the long way, my minions will spot this lane. This is also covered, so this is the only path that I have to worry about that uh, that path through the red bush, right? So um, I think reading could have been okay as long as I did that blue trinket, but I got complacent, didn't place it, and died on 5,200 gold, guys. Okay, so that's a little bit. We always say that we should recall on a thousand. This time around, we got 5k. So. Um, Definitely not ideal, but that's okay. Uh, at the end of the day, we did uh, we did get the objective. Uh, we kind of took everything off the map. Uh, Baron is up before we spawn, so I'm trying to tell my teammates that they should threaten to end mid uh, because obviously a 4v4, 4v5 a Baron is not winning right now. So ideally, what they need to do is just control contest the mid waves and just try and threaten the end if the enemy team goes to Baron. Just try and stall it out, but. For whatever reason, the enemies aren't interested in starting Baron 4v5. Actually, Annie shows bot lane, uh, which is really, really good for us uh, because we don't have TP. So if they started Baron there, it could have been quite risky. We just uh, buy Mercurial straight up. I'm thinking uh, I need an MR item. I need an armor item. Uh, the only way I can really die is if I get CC chained through the Annie. Um, and randoms make sense, right? They have Yasuo. So the anti-crit makes a lot of... A lot of sense in this game. I think I'm kind of full build at this point. I have lifesteal, I have attack speed, I have everything. Um, it's just up to execution at this stage. We have our blue trinket. Keep in mind, don't don't feel threatened to use the blue trinket too early as well. I think this is an important uh, concept. And uh, There, for instance, I should have just blue trinketed that uh, that bush near the Silas and then I would have seen this happening. We actually don't clip. Uh, we don't clip the, uh, the Silas with our ult and it goes horribly wrong. We all lose a lot of HP. Uh, but we do see that Twitch is, is uh, pushing to try and end here, so we're considering uh, stopping the recalls, uh, playing with them, toying with them, trying to get them to uh, to stagger their bases and uh, see if we can have two or three people left over here and then Twitch regroups with us and now we can actually retake because we know Yasuo is mid, potentially more people have recalled, not just Yasuo, and so we can take control back of this area by just threatening, threatening the end angle. Obviously there's nothing here, so um, we just go back to the mid wave. We, we do get any altered and we actually don't use our Mercurial, which is terrible. If we used our Mercurial there to um, cleanse the cleanse the Annie ult, we would have been okay. We would have conserved a lot more health, so uh, pretty poor execution there, buying Mercurial and then not using it. You know, at that stage, I might as well just buy Witsend or something, because um, really you're paying a lot for the QSS active and you have to be able to use it. Our team kind of uh, runs down with us, but I think that fight was mostly my fault. And that's a good example of a fight, you know, picking the wrong fight there, right? We don't have we don't have Yonals, um, and we're also low on HP, so it's like there's no advantages for us there, and we know it's a 5v5. There's no reason really to force it. Um, we should have just been happy to go to one of our side lanes, maybe go bot there, catch the bot wave, have our TP ready in case they start the Baron. Uh, but instead, we kind of opted into a losing fight. Plus, we're also losing the inhib. So you live and you learn. But what's important is to not uh, get stuck in the past. Uh, we're thinking about the next play, what can we do? The Dragon is up, it's the third Infernal Drake for both teams, so a pretty high value objective, but not the end of the world. Uh, so if, if they were doing, uh, you know, rushing the, the Dragon there, I was more than happy to just TP the Baron, rush the Baron, trade it. Uh, Silas is uh, still in base, we can see that he's dead, so he's coming very, very late. And uh, we can see that they're quite split, so here I'm just considering, okay, uh, let me buy out, let me grab an elixir, be as strong as I can be, and there I actually TP'd after the minions died, that's really really important, these minions are like a ward for me, I know that there can't be any wards here, right, because I saw where Silas was, uh, so I get a nice blind uh, ult from Fog, uh, we get two kills here, start up the fight, uh, we're basically flanking uh, the backline already, so it's always going to be a good fight for us. And, you know, we, we don't just leave. We're not just happy with the two picks. We see that our Volibear is dead, so continuing the fight is a good idea, right? Because otherwise they might still be able to contest 3v4. Um, and we just try and extend it. Try and get more kills, extra kills, so that we can actually uh, get this dragon. Ended up being very, very close. I think, again, this is like a mechanical thing where 
perhaps if I had just focused Yasuo there instead of focusing the Zac, even though the Zac was 20% HP and the Yasuo was full, uh, Zac is not a threat, he's on full cooldown. Uh, nothing to worry about there, so I think that was just a bit autopilot from me, hitting the wrong person, not hitting the threat. Uh, just, just looking at the HP bar and seeing this guy is lower, so I'm going to hit him. And it turns out to be a pretty um, pretty close fight. Neither team really gets anything, yeah, so we'll probably solo dragon here now. And uh, we have to be thinking uh, about the next objective. I'm thinking what to buy as well. I'm thinking I died rather quickly there. Um, I died really, really fast. Um, and uh, Wit's End gives me a little bit of tenacity, right? Uh, a little bit of extra magic resist, and of course it's also going to give me uh, more attack speed than the Zerk as well. So I just thought, why not? I've already got an Elixir going, might as well just uh, get 6 slotted here. Again, we're just considering the next play. I don't want my teammates to fight in the bot side here, because again, there's nothing to play for. And we have no vision, it's just... We're trying to salvage a side of the map that is already over. Like we always say, guys, you die bot side, where are we going? Immediately running top, okay? We're we're not going to play the same side of the map because uh, there's just nothing there. There's no vision. We see Silas is still in our bot side jungle trying to chase something. So we've got a numbers advantage fight on the Baron. This is what you're going to be looking for in the late game. Just numbers advantage, you know? If you're up a member or if you have the right members in the area, uh, you can always find a favorable fight. And here I'm a little bit too tunneled on this Baron, it's actually probably better for me to escort my um, my Twitch into the play, he ends up dying, uh, but we actually clean it up, so uh, not the end of the world, uh, could have been better, could have been worse, uh, once again I think if I had just helped my Twitch re-enter the fight that would have been even cleaner, uh, but we end up uh, getting all the kills at Baron, I think that would send actually came in clutch there, and... Yeah, I think we can pretty much solo this Baron. We have some lifesteal. Uh, we've got uh, Sterex. We also have Nami healing us. This was really great by Nami to actually start tanking the Baron so that I do full damage to it. It was a good idea. And we know that there's potential teleports that could come out, but uh, we also don't have Smite, so we have to consider uh, the potential uh, Baron steal. But we're just playing for the finish. You see that Annie comes in. We stop the Baron, try to turn on her, miss our abilities, and get the kill. And it's a big uh, big turnaround of the game for us, and really that's just all thanks to the Silas, right? The Silas was trying to look for a meaningless pick. Like we said, bot side, there's nothing up. They've already uh, they've already gotten the dragon, so really there's this... Oh, actually, I think we stole the dragon. Oh yeah, we did. We did We did get the dragon, but um, there, there's no objectives. There's, there's wards from both teams on that side of the map. There's really nothing to achieve staying there. You should always try and flip it as soon as the play is over. And... I really want my Akali to not be sidelining because again, he's very, very, very weak. Uh, he really can't beat anybody 1v1 in this game, so there's, there's no there's no purpose to him being on sidelines. I believe he has uh, Ignite as well, and not TP. Uh, so really we should just be grouping mid and playing for Pyre this mid lane, uh, playing to threaten and And here I see that Annie is still dead, so I want to pull the trigger, I want to keep them here, I want to invite this 5v4, even if it's not the ideal engage, um, even if I pay the price for this. Uh, it still should end up with my teammates cleaning it up just because we have the numbers advantage and that's what you have to look for with Yon, right? If you can build uh, correctly, if you can build some tanky items, you can look for these engages almost like a, you know, like a Malphite. You're almost Malphiting ulting in just, just because you can see that the numbers are there and uh, yeah, there obviously the execution wasn't the best. We should just snap back as soon as, uh, as, soon as our ult CC finishes, we should expect to get CC chained and we should just snap back, uh, become unstoppable because we've already done our job. We could also Randuin uh, on the way out there, uh, just to keep people in place, keep them there while Annie hasn't respawned. Um, but regardless, it ends up working out. Uh, the math checks out, numbers wins games, and uh, my team ends up pushing mid and just uh, cleaning house. So uh, if you take something away from this game, it's uh, just don't be afraid to start uh, not ideal fights if you have the numbers advantage, because most of the time that is how you win the late game. It's just uh, if you're missing a person, you can't really win. And uh, if you see that people aren't respecting uh, the, the disadvantage of numbers, just pull the trigger. It uh, doesn't matter how it looks, uh, just go for it, and uh, you know, more times than not, it's going to end up working out.